Hey everyone, uh, so in this video we are going to be modeling out this stool we see right here. Um, and then also we're going to work on optimizing and kind of reducing our poly count and making sure uh, you know we have we know exactly what we're looking for when it comes to eliminating ingons and unwanted um, edges. So for this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I could take all of this these items here, and I think I will. I'll take all those and hide the collection. I'm going to create a new collection. Now I'm just going to call this here piano, which was my original. Let's see, piano, not piano. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm going to call this stool. There you go. And so now we have two collections. One is our piano collection, as you see there. And the other one is our stool collection, which we will be populating right now. So for the stool, uh, what I'm going to do is it's really this is one big mesh. And then I will actually chop off a leg. And let's see here. I can actually show you a little better of what exactly this uh, is meant to be doing. So if you look right here, we have this stool and then the leg itself is chopped off and then they basically kind of appended a, an additional leg there to make it functional again. I think it adds a little bit of character. Uh, no, this is again, Sophie's original design. Um, so uh, we're going to go ahead and, and just go with the design that she had concepted up. So uh, for this, I'm going to go my object mode. So I really can't see very well there. Uh, I'm going to just add a cube here. And what I want to do first, I'm going to go to my top view. I want to just, I'm right now going to be just making this, um, I want to make this shape here roughly. So I'm just kind of thinking about how this would look. Maybe something a little bit larger, about like that. And now we will uh, actually scale this to fit our model, um, our piano model. Uh, and then once we are complete with this, um, so that looks pretty good there. Now I want to I just think about in this case, I'm just thinking about the base here. So maybe I might want to scale this down just a pinch. And now if I'm looking at this, I see it's tapered in just a hair. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. That looks pretty good. And now I'm going to work on the cushion here. So the cushion is um, you know, a number of different insets and extrusions. So I'm going to go ahead with uh, insets and extrusions. I'm going to when I uh, apply the scale, so select on that with my object mode. I go to object and go to apply and scale. And so now when I inset that face, it will uh, look nice. So I'm going to go ahead and inset that like so. I think this is about the right amount. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to extrude it out. So my control E, I'm going to go ahead and turn on these screen keys so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, I'll go ahead and work on this in just a moment. And, uh, there they are. And then I think I want to go ahead and actually just bevel these edges here. So control B to bevel. And that looks pretty nice. I just noticed that my, I, I just looks like there's a small bevel, so nothing too large, but that looks pretty good there. Um, so we don't have any ingons and I think we're pretty, pretty pleased with how this looks. Um, so now the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, create these four legs. So before I can do that, I can do this one of two ways. The first way I can just simply, um, you know, shoot some legs down, but I do want this to be one large mesh. I think that might be the best way to go about this or maybe a way to go about it. So I'll go ahead and, um, and that that's one way. So I could potentially, you know, divide this up and have four different legs going from here. In this case, I actually think it might be more uh, resource efficient if I were to just make four legs and just simply place them inside here. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to uh, select this object and go duplicate with Control D. Otherwise, remember if you uh, duplicate with Control D, if you don't want to do that, also you can go into um, Object and Duplicate Object, and then I'll just do that. And now what I want to do here is I just want to hit isolate this. So shift I is going to put into local mode. And I'm going to uh, add in a, 
an edge loop there. I'm going to bevel this out until it's about the thickness of the leg I want. And that looks pretty good. It actually might be even better if I go to the bottom view. And then Control or Alt C. I'm going to put an edge loop there. And then again, bevel this out until those corners are about squares. All right, so now I have a square here, um, here, here, and here. It looks like perhaps I need to bring this in just a hair to make it a perfect square. Okay, that's pretty good. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select these four squares and extrude them down about there. Now the thing is, you might you might ask why don't you just do that for everything else? It's because by doing this, I'm actually going to be creating all these extra edges, therefore larger faces. And my my poly count right right now this is 164 triangles, uh, where I could simply just have something like, oops, let's go ahead and select this. This, which is only 36 triangles. So we are literally saving, you know, about 130 triangles by doing this method. I guess more, maybe more like 100 triangles, which in the grand scheme of things isn't much, um, but it's just optimization trick I'm using. So I'm gonna go ahead and show these legs again. Um, isolate them with Shift I. And now what I want to do is I want to move these down just a little bit longer. So with my move tool, which is W, I think about there looks pretty good. And then I want to, uh, oops, I want to add a loop to all four of those. And then I'm just going to select all four of these. And I'm going to bring them in now. This is uh, for this. I'll make sure, because see, if I were to just go with a bounding center, they all come in like this, which is not what I want. I don't want the knee, the knee bending trick. I'd rather have each one of them bend, but I don't want them all to be the same. So what I'm going to do here is uh, go to my top and then go to individual origins. And now that means each one will have its own origin. And that looks pretty good. So I'm just trying to match this curvature right here. Maybe a little more. There you go. It looks pretty exaggerated. I think I'm pretty happy with how that looks. Um, and now what I can do is I can just, uh, actually I might just go ahead and select these bottom ones. And then I can uh, go select and I can grow selection. Uh, let's see, what is the growth selection? Hmm. Oh, here we go. Select more or less. So I just use the up arrow usually. Um, that's the easiest way for me to do it. And then so I want to just select everything I want to keep. And then using the invert, which is control I. I want to just go ahead and delete those faces. So now I have these four legs, uh, you know, which I can grab all those four legs. And I'm going to show, I want to exit isolation mode. And now we have those four legs. I might want to bring these legs in just a little bit more. Um, so something like, ooh, we actually want to actually want to move them in a little bit. So here you go. Now I'm move them up a little bit as well. So they're kind of poking inside right there. Okay. So now I have these legs. Um, I think they look okay. I'm pretty pleased with how they look. Although, yeah, I think that looks fine. Okay, so the one thing I do I want to change is that this leg over here is supposed to be chopped off a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and add a edge cut there. Oops. And I'm going to now drop that to Q key. And then I'm going to go my face mode and just select all those faces and just delete those. And now I want to make sure to fill this here. So I can just go to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and select these two faces and just bridge edge loop. And so now we have this broken leg, which is exactly what we want. Um, so the next thing I want to do now is I want to create this board um, coming across right here. So I have a board I want to create. And then also I have this uh, other board that's kind of bent in the background you know, that I want to be um, you know, in the background kind of, or kind of bolted to the one side, you know, being here. Of course, we have a bolt there and there's a bolt coming in this direction as well. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and start that. I'm just going to start by doing my front view. And I'm going to go on my object mode. I'm going to add in a cube. In this cube, I want to just scale down to be roughly that shape. Um, of course, I'm going to need to come in a moment and uh, scale it back even more so. Let's think about, well, maybe I need to actually come in a little bit bring it a little bit larger. 
something like that, perhaps. Yeah, there you go. That looks a little better. And then, of course, it is too thick, so I'm going to bring that, scale it down quite a bit. Um, and then I see that this has a, a little bit of a taper to it. So I want to give it that taper look that I want going for. Oops, let me bring that in again, sorry. And now I can move this, and I might even want to turn my snap tool, make sure it's too closest, because if I put center, it's going to snap to the center of my, uh, the vertex, um, but the closest is going to snap it right when it makes contact, although this does, oh, okay. So it's just because I'm making, or this is tapered, therefore it's going to snap a little differently, which is fine. That work out for us. Uh, maybe, maybe I might even do is go bottom. I might even rotate this a little bit. Just a hair. There you go. That was pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I think that's gonna work out. Um. Okay, so now I'll make another cube. Let me go back to my front view again. I'm just repeat this process. Add mesh cube. Now with this, I'm going to be the the leg going up. So I'm just going to make this taller. Now I do want this to roughly be about level with this bottom of this uh, chair, like that. And also I want to add in a loop edge. So I'm going to go my Alt A. Or Alt C, sorry, to add this loop, and then right about here, I'm going to place that cut. I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to now move this a little bit closer, and maybe just out a little bit. And then of course, I want to scale this down. I think about there is pretty good. Let me turn my snaps, and now I want to. Oops, didn't want to do that. Now I want to grab this top face and I want to just tweak it out a little bit because if you look at my reference, it does, um, what is it? it does kind of pull out a little bit. And also if you look at my reference there, it's kind of at a little bit of a taper at the top. Okay, so yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, I might want to even go as far as kind of exaggerate this a hair, maybe I exaggerate the top a hair so that kind of looks cartoony, and that's what we, we're going for is this cartoony look. Um, I might even want to come in here and, and mess with some of these polygons. So we'll go to local or to normal and move this one out just a little bit, maybe even flat out a little bit as well. Uh, let's see. There you go. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good silhouette. And so now we have this chair. Um, no, we, we have this broken chair that is fixed like so. And so now I can do, oops, let me go ahead and leave that. I'm going to, um, you know, get all these together. Or actually, I'm just going to go ahead and move the stool back into, I guess I don't need to move the piano. So I'm going to go ahead and show my piano. And basically, I just want to make sure my stool, everything in my stool is, um, you're going to look, okay, so right now we do have a little bit of an issue there. And that's fine. So what we're going to do is we want to join everything. So I'm going to select all my stool components, right click and go to join. And so now it's all one piece. So therefore, if I make adjustments, it will be, it'll be to the whole thing. And I want to make sure this is flush with the floor. Um, so go and turn on my snap and now it is. And this is a little bit too tall. So I need to make this a little smaller. So therefore, I ideally want it to slide right under there. So we'll go ahead and make this. Yeah, that's pretty close. Maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, I think that's going to work. Um, okay, so I'm going to pull this out a little bit. Maybe I want to twist it like you see in the in the reference. So now we have this chair made up. And so the last thing I want to talk about is optimization. So what optimization is, is it is um, you know, going through here in finding anywhere we can eliminate uh, polygons. So you want to eliminate them if they aren't being seen, but also, um, you know, you're, by doing that, you're not, you're saving 
triangles, no resources, but also you're saving texture space. No, you, you aren't wasting your time texturing items that won't be seen, but also you aren't wasting your time, um, you know, you aren't wasting your space texturing, you know, things that are important, but rather you're only texturing things that are important, and therefore they get bigger canvas to work with. So some of these places might be uh, underneath. So maybe I'll come in here and I might want to, oops, you know, select all these faces down here. Um, Maybe I want to delete those. I think in this case I will because I don't plan on this thing to be upside down. Um, you know, so therefore I want to come in here to this piano or to the bench and delete. Oh, I guess I don't want to delete that one. I want to just delete these three faces since I will never see those faces. Now this one, I'm not sure if I'll see this. But I can go ahead and delete it. Because I don't think it, I, I can't imagine a scenario where I see that face either. Um, so coming in here, um, perhaps I'm, I'm going to just hit shift I to look at isolation. That looks pretty good. Um, and we already know that the piano is optimized or the keys themselves are optimized. I'm going to go ahead and see this. Okay. So this face I can get rid of because we will not ever see the inside of that face. Um, let's go and look at these. I don't know if I'll ever need those either. Yeah. I'm not going to ever see maybe be a, It'd be a miracle if I can imagine to get the right angle. And if I can't get the right angle, then, you know, I kind of earned it, I think, um, to see that Easter egg of, uh, of emptiness. Um, okay, so that's pretty good. Now, with this, I'm going to just go to my back view. Yeah, th these three, um, I will be able to see that because, you know, if you're, if you're looking at it from behind, you can see that point there. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, yeah, everything else looks good there. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that we're, for the most part, in the clear. Um, far, okay, so now we eliminate all of our unused faces. Um, so there's a few things that, if you know, basically the kind of rule of thumb is if it doesn't actually support a silhouette and it doesn't do anything for the silhouette itself, you can probably eliminate it. Now, um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just look at this one. This one's pretty stinking good. Uh, there's not any end gone. So an end gone, just a refresher, is any time that you see more than uh, four, four vertices on a, a plane. So it's a five-sided edge or five-sided uh, polygon. And so we can go ahead and eliminate that. And I think here's where we're going to find our end gones. Or not our end gones, but maybe. But here's where we're going to find our unused uh, mesh. So for example... I might go ahead and I think it'd be my best interest to cut this in half because I only want to work on half of it first. Actually, no, I don't need to cut this in half quite yet. I don't think I need to at all. Um, so here's, for example, here, this edge here does not actually support anything. Um, it's just there because it's the middle seam. So I can go ahead and remove that. Um, now, the only reason you would might, might want that is if you're planning on uh, mirroring it, which maybe we are, and if we are, and actually I think we will in this case, because there's enough going on in the middle um, that we won't actually, it won't really be an issue to mirror it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, eliminate all the this one side, and we are just gonna optimize this side here. So here, um, now here's a situation where this edge here is not actually doing anything. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just well, this edge, this vertice to that corner, and that's pretty good there. Uh, so now we, we reduce our triangle count by one because we aren't using it. Here's another scenario where this piece is not doing anything here. Neither is this piece. I'm going to go ahead and merge these right there. And actually, I might not even need this one either because, um, you know, that's a one, two, three, four. So we're in the clear there. This is one, two, three, four. So we're good there. Uh, a couple triangles there. And we do need this edge here because it does support, um, it will support a, a silhouette. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually might go ahead and select a couple of these. I don't think these actually are, these two actually uh, do anything. So I'm going to merge those to the last. And then this one here, I can merge up here. Just right click merge last. 
Um, let's see. So some of these, they can merge. And so what I'm really trying to find here, I'm just trying to optimize this so that I'm not wasting any uh, resources. Um, because if I'm if I can bring this down as low as possible, what's going to happen is my my uh, asset will run smoother, and I can put more of them into the into the game or to whatever I want, and it won't actually affect anything. So um, here's another scenario. Another way you can do this also, you can turn on your snaps, and uh, you can actually go into your uh, let's see what is it called? You report shading, no, um, viewport overlays, and you could find somewhere in here. Maybe actually, it's trying to call where this is. Um, oh, under tools, if you go to options, you can go to auto merge. And so, basically, what I would say is anytime that two pieces are touching, it'll automatically merge them. So, that now, therefore, I can just simply drag things. Okay, so I'm going to right it's up here i don't think it's actually giving me a silhouette because i it doesn't change the silhouette because i already did move that earlier um which means i can then move some of these vertices as they are not doing anything for me either uh you know greatly optimizing my my resources here oops let's go and grab this one grab this one okay and i do need these two because these actually do uh you know, change the silhouette. But this right here, I might not need anymore because um, you know, I have a one, two, three, four edges there. You know, one, two, three, four. So we're good there. And we just want to make sure that I'm not. Uh, I just want to make sure that I'm not actually changing the silhouette at all because once that silhouette changes, that's when that's when we have an issue. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, there and I think really I think this is as optimized as I can get without actually manipulating the silhouette I don't see oh I guess right here is the only other thing I can do so I can change that there and move this one up here yeah I think that's gonna be the best I can do at this point okay so um, you know really I guess I kind of got on tangent but the thing is you want to do that for really everything here um, is simply go through everything that you, you know, eliminate the faces you don't need, and also, um, you know, on top of that, try to eliminate any polygons. So, like, here's some more polygons I might not need, or edges, I should say. Um, I don't think, yeah, these edges aren't doing anything for me, so I'm going to just go ahead and move those here. These faces will never be seen, so I can remove those faces, and then same over here. Um, now this should not actually change the silhouette at all. I think we're good there. Okay, so um, you know, overall, I was able to reduce the poly count quite a bit and optimize this as much as possible. Um, and then you could come in here if you want to make this a little smaller. Another thing is, make right here, I'd be able to eliminate a couple of these. Um, no unused vertex. Oops. There, I just eliminated a couple triangles. That looks pretty decent there. And of course, I eliminated the back ones since they'll never be seen. Okay, so, um, yeah, but in the next video, what we're going to do is we are going to talk about unwrapping our asset. Um, and then, you know, once we are done unwrapping, we're going to start to prepare it to go into our texturing software.